Yo, this is Mikey Jordan. You know what you're watching? You're watching Hot Spots. That's where it's at. That's entertainment. <laughs> well, see, back in the days in Jamaica, well, we grew up in a situation where reggae music was all around and nobody was paying much attention except the people who were making the music and the people who were listening to the dances so my job was to make sure that every jamaican could get accustomed to their own music but as you know every radio is polluted with a lot of foreign music foreign elements so what i wanted to do was to give jamaica some nationalist kind of vibe So what I, what I wanted to do in Jamaica within the 70s was to bring, for, bring forward reggae music. You know, everybody was doing it in their own way. Bob Marley did it his way, I did it my way. And my way was to bring it to the radio so that whichever country I travel, reggae music would still be on the radio. And even today, from 1976, reggae music is still on the radio and growing in many different countries worldwide. And that's just it. I mean, I'm from Port Antonio, Jamaica, the most beautiful part of Jamaica. We have, we have rafting on the Rio Grande. We have the Blue Mountain Peak. We got fresh spring water. We got the big, nice, sweet Caribbean Sea. We got a lot of coconut tree. And we got some Irish people, like the Maroons, and all those people who are native roots and culture Jamaicans, all right? So you want to talk about the hot spots in Jamaica? Well, you're talking about the ghetto now. So, you know, you don't mess with people in the ghetto. It's get shot. You understand? Well, the next thing about Jamaica is that we're full of love. And if you can't, and for all the girls, if you can't find, if you're too fat, and you can't find a man in America, you go to Jamaica, there's a guy waiting for you, all right? <laughs> Check it out. Jamaica now. There's an old Jamaican song by the Heptones called I Need a Fat Girl Tonight. So, America is the opposite. In Jamaica, they don't, the guys don't like them skinny. In, a, in America, they like them skinny. So I'm warning you ladies, if you feel like some guy looking at you like you're overweight, you ain't damn overweight. Take a trip to Jamaica. You're going to find out where you're going to get down there. And you're going to go back. Trust me, man. I'm serious about that. And I know what you're thinking, but that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, man. Also, in Jamaica, we have a lot of dances. The reggae music started through the sound system. And that's how I got in as well, being a selector, being a DJ, getting familiar with every kind of reggae music there is. But I chose to play roots and culture reggae music, you know. There are some guys who try to make commercial music, try to make it into the pop charts. That's not my intention. The only time I do things like that is when like big record companies pay me to do that for their artists. But I don't do it for myself. You know what I mean? I produced UB40. I was right in the studio when they mixed in Red Red Wine. I helped them set up the mixing board so that they could get the right mix for that. So if you listen to anything from UB40 before Red Red Wine and listen to Red Red Wine, you will see where Mikey Jed fit in. And after we helped them with that, they said, why don't you do the B-side for the record? Because I came out as a single and I mixed the B-side and it went to number one, the record. So whether it's A-side or B-side, the record went to number one. Sold a lot of millions for them. Then we work on another song with them called Cheerio Baby and I mix another track and they use as a B-side, so two of that. Then I work with The Clash and I produce the first song for them to put them in the British charts called Bank Robber. 
And then with the success of that, well, Sony Music, CBS, or Epic, call it what you want. They flew me back and they want to get more out of Mikey Jets. So we work with them and Sandy Nista. That has put them in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But we're not trying to take credit now. You got to go log on to www.mikeyjet.com. And anything you don't find there, go to any search engine like Ask Jeeves or Google.com. Just type in my name. But remember, spell it correctly. My name is not Mickey. That's for the mouse. This is Mikey. And that's me. M-I-K-E-Y. All right? So bless up. You're watching Hot Spots, where the action is at, where entertainment is at. That's entertainment for you. Mikey Jen said that. I Mikey Jen, I'm the man who came to me. Anything we swing, I see the people, they may look because we international. We gone abroad. International. I see America. What else can I tell you? You got to come to the website. Are you, well, you can't download my DVD for free. Nah. But you know what? It's good. On my website, you'll find a lot of good things. For example, if you're a promoter, there's a promoter's toolkit where anything you need from me and I'm not home can fax it to you or email it to you. Go there and you download it. And also, every record company who rob Mikey Dread or who don't pay me royalties, you go to my website and you go to the Mikey Dread free download button. It's called updates, which I where I update the people and downloads. Anybody who don't pay me, the music is on the free download. So you don't have to buy any Mikey Dread. So before you go and purchase a Mikey Dread, go to my website and see if I was paid by the record company. If I wasn't paid, it's for free download. And I'm encouraging you, it's not stealing. It's free. So right now we have one called Mikey J Dub Party. Those guys, the contract expire long time and they're still printing it up. So what I do to stop them is to give them for give it to the fans for free. And the record company asks me what you're doing, I just take them to court because I'm longing to hear from them. And this is the only way we're gonna talk. Alright? So all artists are encouraged to do that. When you record music and you don't get your money and you see your music I sell, you better give it away for free. So that those bastards can make no more money off of your labor. Because your music is called your intellectual property. And one advice to all recording artists or aspiring recording artists. There are three things you're going to look for in your contract. Look for a word called in, in perpetuity. In perpetuity means forever and ever. So they can ask you, I hereby sign away all rights and ownership in this song to you in perpetuity. Don't do that. Don't sign it. Another one is, um, I hereby relinquish all my rights and ownership to this music. You're never going to relinquish or give away your rights to nobody. You see those words, strike them out. One more one. They always say, when you sign a contract, it's going to have a clause in there that says, if, you, if it's a vinyl, they want the rights for any format, no known, or hearing after devised meaning like for example now in my time it was only vinyl and cassette so any record i signed away in the early 80s it was on vinyl and cassette so those are the two formats which i allow but years later we have cd and now we have mp3 and we have dvd if i were to sign away my rights these record companies have the rights to any dvd i put out they'll sell my mp3 and they would sell my CDs. But you know what? They say Mikey Jed is a problem. Because what? I'm educated and I don't give them a chance to rip me off. Check it out. They're ripping off everybody else. Why they don't rip me off? Because I studied the law. The music law, that is. Thank you and have a blessed day.
Say not to Jed is not a terrorist. We are no terrorist. Rasta is not a terrorist. Oh yes. Rasta man, they man no terrorist. We are no terrorist. Rasta is not a terrorist. Can we no hijack plane? We no bomb up city. All the praise was the for I am born up with sense. We no hijack plane, we no bomb world tower. Only be no bad. Or swing sweet soulful lovers rock. He is the professional. He is the dread and the control. Would you please welcome historically to the first annual dread.